I speak about this a lot, but I think it probably bears uh, repeating, and that is that the whole, what seems to be occurring descriptively and conceptually, you could say the whole world that, the world of experience, the world of you know, our lives and everything that seems to be being encountered, all of it. looks to be something, is experienced as being something uh, that has a kind of enduring nature to it. And if it didn't <laughs> have that seemingly enduring nature, well, it's fair to say nothing would be perceived in one sense. In other words, the perception of something, either a experience we think of as internal to us or perceiving something uh, we conventionally imagine to be outside of us. In either of those cases, we still have this very strong sense that we're experiencing things, phenomena, right? Perceiving phenomena. The question is, is that really true? Is it really, are we perceiving something that is a thing, that is a discrete, identifiable, recognizable phenomenon? It looks that way for sure, and in one sense is that way. the whole world of, we could say the world of form, the manifest world that looks like something, appears as something and so on. But I just invite you to explore what's actually appearing and the way that it's appearing. Yes, it appears as something identifiable and fixed. That's its, its display. But feel your experience, the presence of what's here, the presence of what's showing up experientially right now. And notice something that is absolutely, I would say, irrefutable, which is the sense of the absolute dynamism of what's here. Just notice that it's impossible to not notice, right? Feel the way in which what we call the moment of experiencing is, has this quality of movement to it, of dynamism, of morphing of unfolding. And notice as you feel this unmistakable sense of flow, of what's appearing, it's appearing, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, this is alive, it's not frozen, right? Everything, there's this dynamism to everything, isn't there? And as you feel that dynamism, just unmistakable aliveness and flow and unfolding of what we call the moment, notice that in its flowing nature, in its ever unfolding dynamism, it never actually becomes something. It never stabilizes as something, does it? it th this is really 
I mean, it's so profound to see this because it, um, well, it, it just flies in the face of virtually everything we think about reality. Even our ability to think about what's here rests upon there being something that can be thought about as being something that can be thought about, you see? And yet, feel the way, feel the impossibility of that right now because of this unfolding, this, we could say, blooming of the moment. I mean, see if you if, see if you find it to be stabilizing as something identifiable, or if you are really with it, which of course you are really with your experience because here it is, we're always with our experience, right? Um, there isn't anything else that we are ever with, but it's just, uh, I guess the the trick, the magic trick of this is that this constant unfolding is essentially overlooked which allows for the seeming concretization and stabilization and resolvability of what's appearing resolving as being something oh now here's this unfolding and now it's resolved as this and now i can identify this there it is <laughs> I know what it is. I've got my, I got a handle on it. <laughs> really? Did the flowing actually cease and resolve as, you know, it's like, you know, you say like something is born into the world, you know, born as the moment, the moment is born as something. Is it really like that? Out of nothing, something is born, and then it just kind of hangs out as that which it has been born as. <laughs> it's not really like that, is it? The moment is not like that. This is why we can't actually pin this down. We can't actually resolve this. We cannot grasp hold of this with anything, with our hands, with our minds, with our concepts, with our words, with our consciousness. It can't, it's, it's, it's not graspable as a thing, you know. It would be like those, you know, one of those slippery fishes or something, you know, you try to grab hold of it and it just, just slips right out of your hand. I mean, it's even faster than that, right? Because, and, and this is a really uh, uh, mind-blowing thing to feel that we often think when we hear this notion of the ever-changing nature of this, that there is a this that sort of becomes, and then this transforms and becomes something else, and then that transforms and becomes something else, right? But all of that subtly or not so subtly reinforces, again, more sense of something that's changing, right? So there's enough stability that, oh, I can recognize that, but yes, I can appreciate that this thing takes birth and then it changes and becomes something, a new form, and then that changes. And But if you feel this unfolding, see if that's really what you're experiencing. Are you experiencing something that's changing into different forms? Or are you just finding changing that never actually becomes something fixed and formed and identifiable? Even all of the ideas that consciousness, the intelligence of the universe generates all of these frames of reference, right? To encapsulate what's here and describe what's here and reify what's here and, you know, essentially turn it into a world of people, places, and things that are seemingly describable. All of that interpretation is itself also appearing and is itself also 
not findable as something fixed and formed. So all of this apparition, all of this apparition, all of this appearing is certainly more verb than it is noun. But it's even beyond that because again, you can't say what if you say appearing somehow is closer than an appearance, right? Because of this dynamism, right? Or changing, as I was saying. What is changing? Again, I'm describe this is the impossibility, right? Of languaging and conceptualizing this, right? Because it suggests that my language in this case, since I'm speaking and my, my ways of talking about this are somehow describing it in some way. But the whole point to see is that because of this ever fluid, uh, ever unfolding, ever um, shape-shifting nature of this, which we're feeling again right now, we're feeling that there's nothing else to be felt but this dynamism. Um, it truly is impossible to say something accurate about it because of that, because it's it's just not renderable. It's just not reifiable and just feel that this is the inherent freedom of reality it's free from all frames of reference by its very nature it is free of all identities by its very nature free of all language by its very nature and all of the implications that language suggests about experience. It's lacking, it's limited, it's problematic. It's, I mean, any way that we conceive of it, not just those, um, those particular ways. That's that's how open ended this is. On uh, how uncollapsible this is. That's its freedom. It's explosive freedom, which is as good a word as any to try to capture what this is. It still doesn't do it, but because nothing does. And what's so remarkable is this. Um, this inconstancy that we're that I'm pointing to, this fact that the moment isn't really even a moment that can be called a moment because it, in one sense, never becomes anything, but it's just constantly becoming, we could say. In that sense, there isn't anything here. But this no thingness, in other words, nothing fixed, that's the emptiness, is appearing as all of this incredibly um, structured, seemingly structured world of form and complexity and detail. Um, from the micro to the macro, the, the details are, that we can seem able at some level to observe, to notice, to identify, to describe, to talk about with one another, to investigate, right? That's the world of the world of forms. And they're they're here in one sense. You know, the world shows up as something. It always shows up, doesn't ever show up naked. It always shows up as something. But it's space-like in its um, in its ever-transforming nature, in that sense, 
it's not anything. Here, all of the flavors of life here, un inarguably here as experience, thoughts, feelings, sensations, the whole explosion of, of, of reality, of experiencing. And yet, when we feel what's here, we can, we can get a taste of the ungraspable, unidentifiable, unresolvable nature of this that's here. Simultaneously with seeming to be here, <laughs> right? It's very dreamlike in that sense. It's um, very much here, just like a dream is very much present in the dream and experienced as present and happening. But there's no forms there, actually, in the dream. There's a presence of dreaming that appears as all the forms of the dream. But no actual form separate from the dreaming. And just like that in what we call the waking life, there's the presence of reality, but, but nothing ever separates itself out from the whole and becomes something. There's just this presence appearing as all the parts and pieces, but never being anything other than this single presence, this indescribable presence. <laughs> 